Guys, welcome back. It's Javier Paredes here. Welcome to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to be talking about all types of stuff real estate. We have so many different projects we're working on right now and we want you guys to be a part of it. Not only be a part of the projects physically, um, we also want you guys to be able to, to invest with us, grow with us, get free content. So don't forget, show your boy some love, like and subscribe to the channel. So anyways, guys, remember a few weeks ago, me and Ray Nunez, the account executive, for pad split walk through this exact property it was actually three weeks ago and we walked through the before of this property and if you want to see that also down below click the link below to see that video as well so we're here finally three weeks later and the property is finally done so i'm standing in the kitchen of a pad split this side of the property is four bedrooms there's four members that will be on this side of the property and share in this common area this is a common area so I'm getting a lot of people who ask me, what are some of the things that you include into your pad split for uh, your members? Well, if you can see behind me, you have all these different things like a toaster, uh, a hot water kettle, a, uh, a blender, all these nice cooking utensils, nice, nice uh, seasoning kits. Now, the reason why I have these stuff here, guys, and I will continue to add these type of stuff and type of stuff into the, the future pad split uh, properties is because this property, I want you guys, as you're focusing on this uh, video and watching this content, we want people to stay here for a long time. I want my retention rate. Uh, Ray Nunez was saying in the last video, he said six to nine months is typically the average retention rate for these members. I want to exceed that. I want to shoot for 12 to 18 months. I want my members to stay here. I want them to feel like they're at home and I want them to feel like, hey, look, they have accessibility to these items where they feel a little bit more comfortable. They don't have to bring them. And it's just one of these things that is just an added extra benefit. Remember guys, when people are going on pad split, they're shopping with their eyeballs. So when my photographer comes here tomorrow, he's gonna be able to showcase all this different stuff and uh, take pictures. And so especially, I got cups, I got forks, I got knives, all that stuff ready for these guys to go. So people can actually physically come in here and make a, a meal. Right? They can, they can cook here, they can make their meal before they go to work, etc. Now this is a common area, like I said before, all the members will be using this, right? And they'll be using this table. So you'll notice, if you look at that previous video me and Ray Nunez did uh, three weeks ago, you'll notice we took out the couch in, in the living room. We also took out the TV in the living room here. And the reason why is because we don't want members to congregate in these areas and get it congested and make noise and stuff like that. Remember, pad split is a stepping stone for people who are looking for affordable housing. They're looking to uh, have some stepping stone, something where they don't have to ha come, come back and not be able to relax. Remember, it's all about retention, guys. I don't want the turnover rate. Now, the beautiful thing about pad split is these members can go on there and they can rent for one week. There's no long-term commitments or they can rent for months at a time. Ideally for me, I want to be able to provide a product on pad split. Cause if you go on pad split right now, there's not really any other product like this in the market. So I have location. I have a nice property. I have great amenities for the guests to use or for the members to use. And then you'll see in a second, when I take you into the bedrooms, the bedrooms are Mac daddy. Like the bed is so awesome. They can sleep on it. And I didn't go cheap, cheap because again, I want them to be able to come into the bedroom, sleep, feel comfortable, get rest for the next day. A lot of these people are working one to two jobs to be able to make ends meet. So this is a stepping stone for people. So this area here, I'm not doing anything with. It's going to stay like that. I don't want people to sit in here. I don't want people to get it congested, anything. No one will be in this area. They will only be using the kitchen area, which you guys just saw, and their bedrooms. I want people to stay in their bedrooms and then use these areas when they, have, when they're, when they need to cook or prepare. Also, you see that I have one fridge over here. Some of the bedrooms have fridges in them. And you'll see in a second, I haven't put the signs up. But there are signs you will see throughout this video of where we have signs on here. It says like throw old moldy stuff away, right? Uh, make sure that, you know, you keep the place nice and tidy. Like you'll see signs around the property that, um, that all, pads, but also has provided. And I've also created my own and I bought them off Amazon. Uh, pads, but also recommends or not recommends. It's a requirement for you to have a fire extinguisher in every single kitchen. Uh, so that's another recommendation you want to have. You can see here, this property is four bedrooms. I have a trash can, a big trash can and a recycle members will, their responsibility will be to take out the trash to the curb. They'll have a schedule. You can see I have Wi-Fi instructions on here as well. 
So I'm gonna take you guys into a bedroom right now to show you exactly how I'm making my pad split unique and not just being like anybody else on pad split where I'm seeing a lot of the competition and I'm like, well, people are just getting beds and like magazine pillows and a magazine mattress. It's like, who wants to live in that? No one wants to live in that. I'm gonna take you guys right now in the bedroom number four. We're gonna start at number four. You can see here I have electric lock here. I can control this Wi-Fi. They get their own unique code and they also get a, uh, a door code. Also, my cleaners, when they come into the property, I have a master code for every single lock that controls every single lock. If a cleaner had to get in a bedroom and do a turnover, they can get in by using the master code. Same thing with the front door. I got a, I got a smart lock on here as well. All the members will have access to the, to the, to the door there. So this is the first bedroom. The member, when they, when they uh, um, secure the room on pad split, they'll see that they have number four and they also will get a layout of bedroom number four so they know what they're getting into. And the beautiful thing about it is, as these um, these members, when they uh, when they uh, reserve a room in this home, they also can see the other guests that are in the home. They can see if they're male, if they're extrovert, introverted, stuff like that. So as you see, guys, here, this is bedroom number four we're starting with. This is a really super nice, comfy bed, right? It's foam mattress. It's got a nice box spring. It's got a nice uh, a nice uh, bed frame. Uh, remember the linens and the sheets you do not have to provide I am not providing them the only reason why they're here is because I'm doing this for pictures tomorrow's pictures and so we're thinking by next Tuesday we'll be able to have this property up and live and have our first member in here on I would say maybe Wednesday or end of the week next week by the way my property has been coming soon on pad split if you go on pad split right now you can look at the properties and it says alert me when this property's live I already have 42 inquiries on these on uh, both these units that is a lot of people who have reached out to me on pad split and say, hey, I want to book your place potentially. So anyways, don't forget, you don't need to uh, include linens. And under the mattress, I know you can't see this right now, you should double up on your mattress covers. People throw up, pee, whatever they do. You want to make sure because this is one of your most expensive assets in this property is the mattress. Where can um, new pad split owners go uh, to get kind of like the material you bought? Yeah, so guys, I will be including links to my whole entire shopping list. That's why it's important for you guys to like and follow and subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna have a shopping list for you guys to shop. It's gonna be super easy. You're gonna be able to go in there, see everything that I'm using, my mattress protector, from my mattress protectors, from my lamps, to my bed, to my linens, to the metal box springs, everything you guys will be able to see. So I'm gonna have that list for you guys. I'm primarily right now getting all my stuff off of Amazon, Wayfair, websites like that, walmart.com. Uh, places that actually deliver to the property because remember I don't want to have to go out and shop for the for this product I want to be able to order online have it all delivered here and hire somebody from TaskRabbit to assemble all the stuff We'll get more into that guys. Don't worry. I'll talk about how you can leverage and delegate all these tasks I managed this project for the last three weeks from my with uh, with the crews that I've had got uh, that have coming in and out of here I'm gonna talk more about that in a second But in the meanwhile, here's the things that I'm including in each room so you guys can see and this will be in the shopping list So don't worry. I'm having a non-smoking sign people can understand that there's no smoking in the bedrooms or any of the or Any of the common areas they get a bed frame. They get a mattress. They do not get the linens I know I've said that multiple times. I know you guys are gonna be ask, asking they get hangers Right, so they can hang their clothes, and then right here they get a dresser. So pad split, you have to have a dresser, you have to have a bed, and um, a refrigerator and stuff like that is optional. But you have to have a dresser, and you have to have a bed, and it has to be minimum of 80 square foot. The bedroom has to be, and they also get a a, a nice uh, a mirror here as well. So they can also come in and they can get dressed. <clears throat> Where here's the uh, here's the thing about the psychology behind a mirror. This side of the home only has one bathroom. They're not going to have to sit in the bathroom and get ready. This will help, again, keep people from, you know, migrating into the bathroom, staying in there a long time. So they have a mirror here that they can utilize. Also, what I like about this area, not only is a dresser, they can use it as a desk. You'll see in some of the other bedrooms, <clears throat> some of my other premium bedrooms, I have included a desk for people to be able to work out. Of. So this is bedroom number four, guys. I'm going to take you into other uh, bedrooms here in a second. So, boom, boom, another number, bedroom number three, all right? Now, I don't know if you guys remember, remember, click the link if you wanna see the previous video from three weeks ago when this was just an opening. All we did here was add drywalls, studs, and a 36-inch opening, we made it this a bedroom here. 
right? Not difficult, guys. Wasn't anything structural. I didn't add any electrical. Everything in this room was as is. So if you want to see how this uh, opening looked before, make sure you click the link for that video so you guys can uh, see what it looked like before. Again, here's another bedroom, but this is a little bit more of a premium bedroom. I would say this is my mid-tier bedroom right here. So the first bedroom we were just in is a lower tier. I got a mid-tier and I got a, a upper tier. So people have options when they book with me. Um, so this bedroom, another thing that makes this property unique is I went with, I have nice mirrors that I had here before. I utilized those. I didn't get rid of those. I have the side tables. I have the bed and I have the, the, uh, the desk with the lamp. I also went with these little lamps that have these little plug-ins for your phone and your USB device, and then I added a mirror there as well. You'll also see that I have a fan. I don't know if you guys remember, Ray Nunes told you, if you have a fan in your room, this will help get you, uh, you know, upwards, maybe another five bucks, you know, uh, on your, on your, uh, on your listing on, on pad split. If you have a refrigerator, things like these will, will adjust your price on pad split. This uh, bedroom does not have a refrigerator in it, but you'll see in a second, I'll take you to a couple other bedrooms where you will see a refrigerator in here. But the cool thing about this bedroom is if somebody wants to, uh, uh, reserve this on pad split, you'll see that it's very unique with all the windows. It has a lot of lighting. Some people really, really love that lighting here as well. I added the dresser for the hangers as well. And they also can come here if they want and also hang their clothes here, right? They can hang clothes here, so they have options. Then they have a couple little cubbies there that they can put their clothes in as well. So this is another bedroom that um, uh, that is available to these uh, these guests. I wanna talk about this door right here, guys. This door, you'll see in the last video, you can actually walk through it. It will actually be locked. People will not have to walk through here. This is a storage area. I'll take you guys there in a second. And the washer and dryer. I'm keeping it locked because I don't want members from the other unit on the other side to be able to come through this unit at all, right? I wanna keep it 100% separate. So right now I'm gonna walk you through the two bedrooms in this unit that are premium bedrooms. So these bedrooms have your refrigerator. They don't have to go and use this refrigerator. The only thing they have to go out here and use is the, uh, the oven and some of the other kitchen appliances. One thing I also want you guys to realize, make sure you lock your uh, your AC thermometer, uh, thermostat and you lock your, your air handler. You do not want uh, your members to be able to move, um, uh, mess this up, move out filters, any of that stuff. I'm gonna have my cleaning team, when they come through here once a month, I'm gonna have them replace the filter. That is their job when they come through here and clean the common areas. You're probably asking, hey Javier, what all needs to be cleaned? Well, some of the things that need to be cleaned when all the rooms are, are, are all the rooms are occupied is just the common areas. So the common areas, meaning the kitchen, the, uh, the previous living room that has no furniture in it, this hallway and the bathroom. That's all they have to do is come in here and then their job would be uh, to uh, replace the air filter in here as well. So this is a thermostat I went with. It's a, honey, a Honeywell home. They cannot touch this. See, it says enter pin. They can't, they can't do anything. It's all set. I can control it from my phone. Remember, previously, like I told you before, I also had the door locks that I can control from my phone as well. So the members will come in here and they will type a code in and they'll see the door of what room that they have uh, uh, they have booked on pad split. Also, I went with a little bit more premium lock because I don't want to go with the cheapies. I want something a little bit more quality. I want something that's with a little bit more longevity. You can go on Amazon. You can find the $40 locks. I spent $74 on these locks. They're just a little bit better built quality. They're, they're just, they're all, overall, I think they're gonna be able to be a, a better lock overall. So I look for longevity when I'm looking for things, guys. Uh, this is one of the premium bedrooms, guys. Not only is it premium because it has a, a refrigerator, it has a very nice mirror, it's got a nice bed, it's got two nice nightstands, it's got your, your desk, and it's a huge room. Like this is a very, very huge room. If you remember, going back to what I said earlier, in the previous video, if you wanna see the before of this, this bedroom, make sure you click that link be below for that, that previous video that we shot. There was a bedroom, uh, a bed right here, or not a bed, excuse me, a, a love seat. The love seat that was here, we removed it. Why? Because we don't want people to invite friends over, a girlfriend over, a boyfriend over, and hang out in the bedroom. When these people uh, secure a room on pad split, they cannot have guests over. It's for one person and one person only. This is not a hangout spot. So what do we do? We don't want people to invite people over. We also want to mitigate from this ever happening. So we remove that. And not only that, that love seat is not as useful as this desk with a nice refrigerator right here. So when somebody uh, secures this, this, um, 
this unit, the, the, this bedroom, they also get a refrigerator with a freezer in it. So that's awesome. They can put their little Coca-Colas in it. And what you guys think about something, the refrigerator out there, you have Judy who, who uh, uh, secured a room. You have Bob who secured a room. All of a sudden, Bob's yelling at Judy because Judy took his ice cream bar. Well, here, they, all, they don't have to do that. They, they're able to put their ice cream bar in here. So this is a little bit more premium. Not only that, it lessens people having to use just that one fridge. There's four different members in this one side of the property. So I want to be able to mitigate from people having to uh, uh, use all that fridge solely for all four people. So you have two fridges in two different rooms on this side. Also, I added my smoking sign. No smoking. It's kind of repetitive. I want people to understand. No smoking. No smoking. No smoking. These people have the vapes now. People do all. So I you over communicate it, right? And so I put it on stuff like that because yeah, if you put it on furniture, it looks a little tacky. So I put it on the uh, the uh, refrigerator there. Added a smoke alarm, and then as well, remember every bedroom has to have a dresser or a closet, right? That's a pad split rule for us hosts. This uh, this closet has a uh, an ironing board, it's got a iron, and it's got hangers. This is also another reason why this room is gonna be premium. They get their own uh, uh, hand reach closet, whatever you call these type of closets. They get their own closet so they don't have to worry, and they can use that as storage space or whatever they, they wanna do. So coming in this area, this hallway, you have a bathroom, one bathroom. I recommend you get a bathroom with a shower, not a tub. We don't want people soaking like they're at the Four Seasons. You don't want that. that. We want to prevent from people hanging out in the bathroom, taking four hours to get ready. So you want to make sure they're a little bit uncomfortable. This bathroom is actually small and it kind of makes people feel like, damn, dude, I don't want to be in here. This isn't the Four Seasons uh, you know, spa here. So this bathroom is a standing shower. I recommend when you look at pad splits, if you can go with properties that have showers versus tubs, that people aren't just sitting there soaking, Go go for that. Uh, another pad split rule is you need to have a toilet a, a, to um, uh, a toilet brush, a plunger, and you need to have a couple rolls of toilet paper initially and some trash bags. That's like your initial get going startup. After that, you can have the members chip in and they can take care of that. But that's another conversation for another day. So this is just a small bathroom. And by the way, come get this really quick. These are my signs that I that I that I bought. I'll include these guys if you guys want a copy of the shopping list so you don't have to have any guesswork. I know putting all this little knick-knack stuff together can be very time consuming. Guys, guess what? The beautiful thing about it is <laughs> I've saved all that time for you. I put a very, very detailed list together for you guys. Don't worry. Click the link below if you want the shopping list. Don't forget guys, but you'll be getting things like those signs, what beds I'm using, what mattresses I'm using. Uh, all the systems and processes I'm using and everything that I'm using will be all consolidated for you guys to be able to use. And this is the fourth bedroom or, or the bedroom number one that we're actually going in. Remember, there's numbers on the doors. This is another premium bedroom, guys. I don't know if you guys can see in the perspective of the camera, but this is a huge, this is a huge bedroom, right? And so this is a queen bed. Now you can get a little bit more premium if you get a king bed. I didn't want to go out and switch that, the beds. If you see the video that we did in shop before three weeks ago, you'll see I had two queen beds in this room, right? And if you want to watch that video, make sure you click that link below. Another, another refrigerator in here in this premium bedroom, nightstands, a nice piece of art on the wall, uh, uh, a nice desk with a lamp. I also included this as well, this vanity. I was going to take it out and remove it, <clears throat> but the reason why I didn't, because I feel like this room might be appe more appealing for a female getting ready, right? Remember, pad split allows co-ed. You don't have to have just all males or all females. You can, you can choose to have that, but the problem is you're probably gonna you know, mess up your occupancy rate. So I'm allowing male and females. And remember, these people have uh, credit checks, background checks, employment verification. So it's not just like any person just moving in here. These people are well-qualified members of pad split. And so pad split does all that vetting for you so you don't have to worry about. It. You'll see up top as well. Every single bedroom has a metal or a, a smoke detector. Every single one I have. Uh, uh, I put fans in most of the bedrooms, and then this mirror will go up on the uh, on the wall. And then this is another big, pretty big closet with hangers in here that they can utilize for either little storage or they can ha hang their clothes. These people are coming with a bunch of stuff. They can only come pretty much with their toothbrush and their clothes. They can't come with a whole bunch of 
uh, furniture items, etc. They only can come with very minimum stuff. It's not, it's against the, uh, the policy. One thing I probably want you guys to realize as well, you'll notice in the bedrooms, I didn't put TVs. Um, I'm kind of playing around with the idea right now because the reason why I didn't go with TVs is because I just don't want people blaring music, right? A lot of people have iPads and, and laptops and stuff like that. Those don't get that, that loud. So I figure like, hey, you're coming with your own stuff already. TV is just not something I want to be able to put in. I feel that these rooms are already a premium. I probably can put TVs in to make it even that more appealing and keep the retention rate. Because remember, that's my goal. I want people to stay here for 12 to 18 months versus pad splits average of seven to eight months or seven to nine months. I want to be able to beat that because I got the proximity, I have the unique product. And if you go on pad split, ain't no one, ha no one has this. No one has this. No one's got this right here. So I didn't go with TVs and that's one thing you guys probably realize. I didn't go with them because I didn't want to uh, create a whole bunch of noise and, and, and you know, people blaring their TV and stuff like that. Uh, other unit, so this is unit one guys. I'm gonna walk you into the next unit in a second, but I'm gonna walk you right here into the garage. I wanna talk about maximizing space. A lot of people uh, have properties with a garage and you're, it becomes a dead space, kind of like this. This is a dead space. I wish I could make a bedroom out of this, but the reason why I can't make a bedroom, just so you guys know, I don't have a window. And if I had a window here, it goes into a garage and that's against code. Everything has to be up code. You can't put just walls up and do whatever you want to do. So I would love to make a bedroom here and make another you know, 250 a week, but I wasn't able to do that. So I'm just keeping this space just open um, and it's just gonna free flow. So right here, remember, this is the door that I'm gonna keep locked, that people aren't gonna have access to. Uh, it's just gonna stay here. So I'm gonna set, take you into a, a storage area and then give you some ideas of what I'm thinking. So all the members will have a washer and dryer. And what I did too, as we were going through and doing these small renovations, I made other couple upgrades. Like for instance, I painted this flooring here right? Just to make it a little bit more appealing. I painted by the front door, make it a little bit more appealing. I had a new front door mats. I bought a new washer and dryer. I could have got away with the, the other washer and dryer I had, but I know that it has a lot of problems. I also want to try to mitigate as a host from people calling up saying, Hey, are my, the washer and dryer's uh, not working. Hey, I'm having issues, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. I went out, I got a brand new set of Amana washer and dryer. You go to Lowe's, um, I'll also have the link to the, the Amana set that I have here. Again, I try to go with longevity as well with washer and dryers. You'll see here as well, I actually included these. These are my signs that I had made. You can see I talk about do not overload, uh, the machines, remove your clothes, um, you know, all these little rules here so people can see and it's right in front of their face. And also they can't move the signs like they're screwed in there. So that's another thing when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you, when you put up signs, they are like tacky on the wall and they will not move because people will try to move them or touch them and stuff like that. So this garage space is a dead space. In most homes, you're going to look at it and you're like, wow, how do I maximize the space of this garage? Now in my mind, I know you guys are thinking, you're like, oh, let's put up, you know, a bunch of walls and make bedrooms. Well, that's not going to work here. Unfortunately, it's too time consuming. It's too costly. It doesn't make sense for this property for me to do that. So I'm going to do something a little bit unique and I'm going to test it out. I want to take you guys over to these storage, these, these racks that I have here. And so you'll see here, I have two racks and there's four levels. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There will be a number on each one, one, two, three, and four. What I'm thinking, and this is just a beta test. I'm going to see how it works. And I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll do a whole different video on this. Don't worry. What I'm thinking is each layer can be rented out, right? And so I could say, okay, this is $10 a week. This is $10 a week. This is $10 a week. And this is $10 a week. That's $40 extra a month per layer, right? Or I can do seven. I got to play with the numbers to kind of see how people are biting. But the idea behind this is, is one doesn't, it, it brings a lot more revenue, right? Because I can make off these rack a few hundred dollars. Or I can say, hey, I can re rent each bin and put locks on the bin. That was another idea that I had, right? But I'm gonna think, I think what I'm gonna do is give them space. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, you can rent, it's first come, first serve. If a member's like, you know what? I wanna rent all of this whole entire rack, right? And I can give them a price break, but I'm gonna do either five to $10 a week per, per layer, per, per layer here. Five to $10 a week, right? I'm gonna start out there and see how that works. If that doesn't work, then I'm, I might try to go ahead and do and rent out the bins where they get one layer and three bins, right? So, but anyways, what my point here is, is like, 
this garage space is a waste of space. So how do I maximize profits on here? How do I um, help offset operating costs like electric bill, cleaning, cleaning, uh, cleaning fees, etc. I'm only paying a cleaner one time to come in this unit, by the way, a one time a month would be about a hundred bucks. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rent these out. And the, my train of thought behind that is not only does it bring revenue, it also helps with longevity. People want to stay here longer. Think about it. It's just like the storage unit business. When people put their stuff in there, they don't ever take it out. And it's just constantly revolving of money in your pocket. So I'm thinking with these two racks, these separate racks, they'll be on a first come first uh, serve basis. I'm going to number them so people have no confusion. So if Eddie uh, gets number one, he'll get number one. I'll say, Hey, look, you're, you rent to number one row. And by the way, they can only bring and fill up amount of stuff will fit in each layer. They can't put stuff outside of here. Cause I don't want people putting stuff out of here. They can't do anything else. They can only fill up one layer. So as much stuff as they can get or as many books or whatever they're bringing here, they want to stack in each layer. That's as much as they can put here. So that's my, that's what I'm going to do for here. I'm going to run that. I think it's going to work great. I bet you I'll get people to bite and you'll see other, other areas of the home where I have included uh, some storage closets that I'm also going to rent out. So I'm looking in storage. I'm looking to make another three to 600, maybe upwards of $800 a month, just in storage. That's going to help offset my electric bill and stuff like that. By the way, in this garage, there will be a ring camera that will look and see what's going on in here. You can't have ring cameras inside the home, but I do have ring cameras on their perimeter so I can keep an eye on my property at all times. Uh, I don't have these set up, but I do want to talk about these. I bought all these lock boxes, right? So I'm going to have five lock boxes on this side of the home, one lock box per room. And then I'm also going to have one lock box. That is a master code lock box. That's going to have hard keys for every single door, right? So if my cleaners never ever need to get in a door cause the code's not working or whatever, they can come to that lock box, right? And then the rest are going to be for the members. And what I have is I have a chain that will go in these locks where they'll be in one spot where if the member's like, hey man, I can't get in room one, it's not working, I don't know why. Well, guess what? We don't have to ha inconvenience them anymore. We'll just say, hey, go to lockbox number one. Every single one of these lockboxes will be labeled. They'll be labeled with numbers in behind them. So they can go to lockbox number one, two, three, and four to get their hard set of key and open up their door right away. And then we'll investigate later to see why that lock is not working. And this is a good point to uh, let the audience know as you're going through this first pad split with your transformation, um, this is just kind of a brief overview. Yep. Let them know about the mini course we'll be dropping here in the next yeah. week or two going in depth on all of these yep. SOPs that you have in place. So guys, we know there's a lot of information. It can be very overwhelming. So a little tidbit of what we're going to give to you. We'll probably give away the free shopping list. Maybe we'll see. We'll probably give you the free shopping list away. But on top of that, we're going to have a pad split mini course. That way you have all this stuff that we're talking about really nicely organized week by week. And now you can go in and say, okay, you know what? I'm setting up a pad split. This is what I need to do from AZ. It takes all the guesswork guys. I know setting these up can feel like it's a lot because remember I come from the short term rental space. So I know short setting up a short term rental is so, so, so much headache and all the ordering and assembling furniture and stuff like that. Don't worry about it guys. The whole point of this is not just to give you free content, but to have a nice, package course with all this information in it for you guys. That way you guys get the cheat sheet and you don't have to worry about it. So stay tuned for that guys. If you guys want to uh, have the pad, pad split course. So we're going to walk through, we're going to go into the other unit. Um, this is the garage area. And I just want to talk about that, how I'm going to maximize this space and hopefully we'll do some content and tell you how my renting of these layers of, of the storage is going to work out. So I'll keep you guys tuned on there. So let's go on to the other unit. And this is unit A, by the way, guys, we're going to go into unit B. And by the way, in unit A, I also have four parking spots. When you're getting into these properties, wherever you're looking in one, no HOA Two, make sure you have adequate parking. If you don't have adequate parking, you can't advertise it on a, a pad split that you can, uh, you know, host people's cars. I think, uh, it was Ray said 40% of people and pad split don't have vehicles. So they're using buses, they're using scooters, they're using bicycles. So remember when you're buying a home, right? You want to think about, are you have, do you have proximity to bus stops? Me personally, I don't want to do a uh, pad split in other, any other areas, unless it's a major metro area, because you have bus stops, you have convenience stores, you have all this amenities outside of the home that are going to be utilized by your pad split members. Remember, this is a stepping stone for people. This isn't a forever thing. This is a stepping stone and it helps us solve the affordable housing. 
So let's go into unit B here. So digging those red shoes. Digging it? You like that? <laughs> yeah. So unit B, they'll have one parking here, one parking here. I'm only doing one parking space on this side, and then on the opposite side, they'll have four, four parking spaces. They have a code. Unit B. Boom. Guys, if you guys are liking this content and you feel that it's valuable to you, give your boy a like and share. Go on my Instagram, give me a follow because there's so much more stuff to come. So guys, we're in unit B, welcome. And so this, if you remember, was the biggest transformation out of anything we've done. So let me just close this door really quick so you can see the perspective of this hallway. If you want to see the previous video of what this unit looked like three weeks ago when I had Ray Nunez here, the account senior rep with Pat Splits, one of the OGs of Pat Split, click the link below. So here's unit B, room one, with their own electric lock, same thing, same concept, guys. Look at this. This bedroom wasn't there. This bedroom wasn't here. Voila. This was not here three weeks ago. And so what we did was we didn't even have to do anything other than put up one wall here and another wall here with a door, right? Like I said, you know, two by fours every 16 inches, your contractors will handle that guys. So you don't have to worry about understanding how to build walls and stuff like that. But my point is this was a living room here. This was a dead space. Why am I able to be able to create this into a bedroom? Well, we have an egress. Right? We have two windows. People can get in and out. They can get in and out this way, right? Because remember, everything has to be up to code. When you are putting rooms up and you're putting walls up, things I want you guys to consider. Here's some pro tips. You need to consider where's your electrical, right? You want at least two, three outlets in every single bedroom. Obviously, I have a fan here as well. This fan, if you look on that corner right there where that cover is, that was where the fan was in the middle of the living room. Now we moved it right here. So that's actually the only electrical work I did for this bedroom. Other than that, it's just the walls. The walls have no, uh, they have no electrical in them. We just did drywall and studs. That was it. I also added a vent up there for airflow. And another thing about this unit, that what makes it unique is it's got its own climate control. So imagine now you're a pad split member. You're like, man, I really like it hot or I really like it cold or, you know, I'm a little funny about, you know, the central AC thing because I have my uh, AC on that side. I have it set to 73, right? We're pretty much always hot in Florida. We don't really get cold. And then I'll set the temperature accordingly when it is cold, when we don't, we don't really get cold, cold days here really. But anyways, they have something that is a mini split unit. This is very easy to install guys and it's very cost effective. What I like about these as well is they're also very energy efficient. You can keep this thing at 60 degrees all month long and it will not move your power bill. That's what I like about these. Now on the other side, if I keep that at 60 degrees all month long, my power bill will be astronomical. So if you have a small space you want to consider, do I have the pro adequate electric, do I have the adequate air flow? Some people in other pad splits, what they'll do is they'll take, when they're doing their walls, they will take uh, duct work and add duct work up above on their central unit and add airflow that way. I didn't do that here because one, sometimes that system isn't meant to do that. I'd rather do mini splits. By the way, this mini split was here already. So what we did was you just did wall here, wall here. I already had the electrical in here, didn't touch anything. The reason why this is able is because you have windows in here. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to do it kind of like what I told you before. And the living room area there, we weren't able to put a bedroom there because even if I have a, a, a uh, window there, you have to jump out into a garage and you can't do that. It has to be out into the outside, it has to be egress. So this is room here one. The reason why these rooms here as well are also premium and they're gonna be premium. I know that room doesn't seem that big. And by the way, on pad split, and I know I said this previously earlier in the video, I'm just giving you guys a reminder. You have to have at least 80 square foot, right? And this is 90 square foot. So we were able to make these walls to give you an idea. Let's close this door, put one wall up here, one wall up here and a 36 inch opening. So now I have this hallway, right? 
One pro tip as well, when you're putting up walls, I want you guys to think about this. Make sure you have the adequate lighting. We did have to, we did have to just add a recessed lighting here because this hallway was really, really dark. So we added a, a, a light there, moved the fan there, and that was it, right? Here, this light was here already, and the kitchen also was also here, as you saw in the previous video. Now, going back to kitchen, I'm gonna say it one more time. You can see I have really nice amenities on the kitchen. I have all these good stuff that or people are gonna to wanna to stay here and cook. This side, unit B, only sleeps two members. So why is this unit a premium? Because one, you don't have to share it with a lot of members. Two, only two people are sharing this kitchen. Only two people are sharing that refrigerator and they get their own climate control. They have an entrance separate from the other members, right? Because remember, this is a duplex. So I took one unit, two members on this side, and extended, I don't know if you guys remember, me and Ray Nunez, we were talking this over, like, should I just make an opening through the, the wall and have this connect to the other unit, or should I just put, a wall, put, put walls up here? We went up with going to put walls up here. It's more secluded, more private. A member can feel like, hey, this is my space. I don't have to share it with anyone else. So anybody booking it or uh, anybody uh, reserving this, these rooms in here, they can feel more secure, right? Another thing too, I want you guys to realize for airflow, this door is here already. Uh, you might've saw in the previous video, but the reason why I kept this is because I wanted airflow. Now remember, these mini splits are in the bedroom. So now I have to think, well, if I don't have central AC, how's this area cooling? So that's why I added the vents up top and I added, or I didn't add this door, but this door was here already. And I was like, well, this makes sense because it's gonna help let airflow go, go in. Added new smoke detectors as well. Fire steam insurance, these are requirements, guys. You wanna make sure that these, these things are done uh, and you have them for your passman. Now this is another hallway with another bedroom. Let me show you here. So they'll come through this door. Also, if you think about it, this door helps keep. Look at this, this it's like whoever, whoever reserves this room, it's like they have this whole area by themselves, right? They don't have to deal with the other member because this, will, this closes and this helps keep down noise. So this, they walk into here, here's room number two in unit B, they get an electric lock, they come right in, boom, right? Here's another bedroom. This is a premium bedroom because also it's got uh, it's got a AC as well. That's it's got gonna be, in my opinion, just as an onlooker, like that's going to be premium having your own control. Own, own control. AC. So you guys will notice, like in this room, I didn't go with I didn't go with a, a, a desk. I tried, but it, <laughs> I just didn't have the room. So we put it here. It was too cluttery. It didn't flow well. So we end up removing that. Um, and there's only, they're only sharing this with the refrigerator in the kitchen with one other member. So it didn't really make sense for me to invest into a refrigerator. So I didn't want to invest in a refrigerator here. It didn't make sense. Uh, they have their own closet. And this room also, while well, I'm going to make it premium as well, here up here, I'm going to give them all the storage for free. They're going to get all that storage for free. I'm going to include that into this room. Now I have additional storage on this side in a second I will show you. So remember, I'm toying with the idea of how do you make more revenue on pad split? Storage is one of them. Adding bicycles is one of them. Right now, I'm just doing the uh, storage route. I'm gonna show you in a second where I'm charging for storage inside the homes as well. So I have extra closets where they can rent out as well. So if they need to bring their stuff, I want them to stay longer, I'm happy with that. It gets me more money and it makes them stay. Think about the storage business. People don't like to take their stuff and move it. So this room, remember, nice mirror, nice bed, Nice mini split unit that they control. It's got two windows and I added this wall here. Remember, this wall was not here. If you wanna see the video before of what this area looked like, click the link below so you can see that, that video. Remember, this, this light wasn't also here. We added a recessed light here. This was a really, really, really dark room once we added it. So you don't, one of the things I didn't realize, uh, which was a, a, a rookie mistake, is when you put the walls up, you don't realize you don't have the much natural light and your space becomes more, it becomes dark. So I, we added recessed light here, one recessed recess light here. And then on this side, if you come here, here's the bathroom. Let me, let me get you over here. And guys, by the way, these, these hallways, they're, they're huge. These are huge hallways. They get a shower here. They get a shower here. Again, I, I don't have a tub, I don't want a tub. This was like this already, but if I had a tub, I would think about consider move, removing it because you want people to be able to stand in here, take a shower, get out. Again, that's why we have mirrors in the rooms where people can get ready, do their makeup, etc. cetera. Um, in here, we have this, this the, because uh, this is on septic, don't flush anything down the toilet that's not toilet paper. 
Another pro tip for you guys, I'm gonna tell you this is probably gonna be one of the hugest, hugest takeaways. People don't realize if you are on septic, you need to understand what type of septic system do you have. And what I mean by that is how big is your drain field and how big is your septic tank. If you are making a home and you're making it to where you have more bedrooms, you might not have the adequate septic system for your, your property. Well, luckily enough, I have had my septic system updated years ago. And so one thing that you need to consider, if you're going to put more people in these houses and they're running more water, that means more usage are going down the pipes and going to the septic system. Well, it's important for you to understand that you might not have an adequate drain field for all these members. So you might need to update your septic system. So consult with your contractor to ask them, hey, how big is your septic system? Get it inspected, get it pumped out. You should be doing that pumping out every two to three years, depending on usage. Being that you're probably gonna have higher usage in this uh, property, you wanna know that your septic system is in really good health. A septic system can last a lifetime as long as it's being maintained the proper way. So I would say if you're gonna have at least six, six to eight people living in a, a household, you need to have a drain field five to 700 square foot and your septic tank needs to be 1,050 or bigger, right? So if I had an original septic tank on this home, which was, uh, when I replaced it, it was 500 gallons. There was no way I would get away with hosting this many people, right? Having this many members in my property. So make sure if you're on septic, you are double checking your septic system and make sure that you're getting it pumped out you know, every two to three years and that thing is functioning the proper way because you don't want to have uh, issues in the long run and affect your members. So remember, as I went through the property, I made all these updates. One of the things we did was I looked at things that also needed to be done, right? Like touch up paint. I had a painter here yesterday. He was doing touch up paint. I want the place to look clean. I want it to look pretty. I want people to get emotional about where they're staying. I want people to stay here. I don't want them to, to have to move out, right? So think about that. And that's a really huge takeaway because a lot of people don't realize how septic systems work. Storage closet, if you noticed, boom, I got a lock on that bad boy. So this is available for any member in this uh, uh, side of the home. So member number uh, staying a member uh, member in the first bedroom or member in the second bedroom can book this if they want, right? They can say, "Hey, I want storage." On this storage, you'll see it's pretty big. As as you, as I walk in here, you'll see it's pretty big. I can walk in here. I'm thinking I'll probably do like ten dollars a week, maybe eight, maybe five. I don't know. I gotta play with the prices. See how people buy, see how people respond. I also try to consider like, what are storage units in the area going for? That's another thing I look at, like maybe like a small little four by four, cause obviously I'm competing with them. But again, it's convenience. People wanna be, have access to their stuff. So this guy might say, you know what? Um, you know, I wanna be able to have this as a pantry. I wanna be able to store my stuff in here. Or I have a lot of sports goods and our sporting uh, gear. You know, uh, I'm a baseball player or whatever, and I want to store it. They can use it for whatever they want. N there's no role on that. But I'm thinking maybe anywhere between five to ten dollars a week. That's another forty dollars a month. So you can see where I'm talking about, guys. Storage in, in the, uh, the the garage racks and storage there. I'm gonna be keeping you guys updated and let you guys know how the storage is working inside here because all this extra revenue will make a big difference on covering electric bill and cleaners and stuff like that. I'm gonna to touch really quick on cleaners. Per bedroom, you're looking at about $25 for that cleaner to come in there, $25 to $35 for them to come in there and clean the unit when a member moves out. Remember, ideally, you wanna be able to keep retention on these members and make sure that they're not moving out prior to a minimum of seven to nine months. I want my members to stay here for 12 to 18 months. So that's why you see when I'm looking at a property, like if I'm looking on the acquisition side and I want to buy a property, I want something with major metro areas. And I want something with nice updates. I don't want to buy a property where I have to put in new kitchen cabinets, new kitchen countertops. I want something that has very nice finishes because also remember people are shopping with their eyeballs. So with the cleaners, they'll come in every seven to eight months, nine months, whatever. Because remember, there's no obligation. They don't have to stay here more than a week. It's a week by week basis. So if they, if you get somebody in for the first month and they're here for, you know, uh, you get three turns in the first month, that's three cleans for the bedroom. So the only time the cleaners are actually cleaning the bedrooms are when a member actually moves out. So you're between 25 to $35 for that cleaner to go in there. And then once a month, I'm gonna have my, my cleaners come in here and then their job would be to be able to sweep here the way I'm going to set it up is their job is to sweep this, mop, check the refrigerator, make sure everything's working, snap pictures, 
Give me a report on how the unit is. Are people smoking? Does it smell like smoke? Does it smell like mold? Um, are they seeing that the member has another guest? I mean, it's just a little quick thing that I'm gonna have my cleaners uh, do when they're in here. That way we have eyeballs on the property, obviously with our ring cameras, all on the exterior because you can't have cameras inside. But at least they have a little bit more insight because we can walk in these units anytime we want. We just don't walk in their rooms. We can walk in the unit any time we want. And so that's the beautiful thing about pad split, guys, um, is pad split is beautiful because one, not does it only so solve the affordable housing uh, um, problem that we're having, because you have two ty types of affordable housing problems. You have for families and then you have for like single people. People are just trying to get going in life, young professionals, they might just got out of college, they need a stepping stone, right? That's one. The beauty about Passbit, not only does it solve that, but here's what I like about Passbit. You're leveraged on, on all these rooms. Imagine if I had two tenants. If I would have went long-term rental on this property and I would have went uh, that route, I would have two tenants. That's two possibilities of people not paying rent, right? If they don't pay uh, their rent, I'm out of business. If I'm out of business, I'm not making money. If I'm not making money, that means I have to pay my debt service, right? I don't want to pay my debt service. I want these people to pay the debt service. That's the beauty about owning real estate is when you own it, you're, you own the note, you own the property, you have the deed in your name, somebody else is paying that, that mortgage down every single month, right? And that's, I just take on the liability of owning it. So what I like about it is, is one, you're leveraged. You're leveraged among all these members because I have four on that side, I have two on this side. That's six people paying every week to pay my bills, right? That's not only that, you also know if they're gonna default earlier in the game. You can go on a long-term traditional rental, you can go 30 days and not know if that person's gonna pay you before you have to evict them and go through the eviction process. One, you can get these people, these members on pad split, you can get them out quick. If they don't pay, they lose the rights to pad split if they don't pay, right? And that's the beauty. You get all this leverage among all these different uh, uh, individuals who are paying your bills. So. There's so many, so many good reasons why I love Pat Split, and I see this as a freaking business model that you guys need to include in your exit strategy. Now that I've done my first Pat Split, this is my guinea pig property. I know it's going to kill it. I got 42 inquiries on Pat Split for people who want to move in here, guys. So remember, me and Ray Nunes, we're going to get together. We're going to be doing more podcasts. So I want you guys to like and subscribe to this video. Give your boy some love come on give your boy a little love give me a little love i know you guys want to give me a little love because there's been some good gems in here that i dropped today but like and subscribe the channel i'm gonna have a lot more content rolling out about all types of different exit strategies all different types of ways you can acquire real estate all different types of tools you can put in your tool belt to make you more efficient as a real estate investor and don't forget this is a lot of content and with all this content, I'm gonna package it all together to give to you guys. So remember, I'm rolling out that pad split mini course for you guys to be able to take advantage of. And I know there's a lot of information today, so don't worry about uh, knowing it all. So like and subscribe, guys. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for tuning in. I was gonna say real quick, where can they go to sign up if they wanna become a pad, a pad split host? So guys, um, in the description below, you will see I have a link for pad split. Click that link if you wanna become a pad split host. Just click the link, sign up, and now you're a pad split host, just easy as that. Ray Nunes, if you're into the Florida market, he will help and guide you through the process. The cool thing about it is you get to take advantage of one of their in-house employees who works and helps people launch their property. So if you don't have the confidence, you're like, oh, this is a lot of work, or uh, I don't know if I have a good property or good product, Ray Nunes will run numbers for you. So click the link in the description below if you want the pad split uh, link so you can sign up, guys.